Hi, this is episode 7 of Kalki Presents My Indian Life from the BBC World Service. This is the video version. You can also find the audio version. You just need to download an audio streaming app or a podcast app and find us on My Indian Life. I'm Kalki Kekla. I'm the presenter of this podcast. And let us know what you think. I hope you've been enjoying it. Please send us messages and send us emails on social media. Also, please spread the word. If you like this podcast, tell everyone about it. And let's listen to episode seven. Can an ancient social system dictate how we live in the 21st century? Our system is a kind of a disease. Rahul Sompumple, the son of a Dalit rickshaw puller, speaks from experience. During my school days, I would wash cars in upper caste households. And uh, when me and my friends uh, would ask drinking water, they would simply refuse. And they would ask us to drink the tap water which we used to use for the car washing. Even animal could not even drink that water. Welcome back to My Indian Life from the BBC World Service, the podcast about what it means to be young and Indian in the 21st century. I'm Kalki Kikla. I'm telling you stories about some incredible people who are willing to go to great lengths to pursue their dreams. This is episode 7, A Question of Caste. First of all, a huge thanks to all those who have heard our podcasts and been in touch. I'll include some of your responses at the end of this episode, so keep listening. And you too can get in touch. Here's how. You can reach me at BBC World Service on Twitter and Facebook using the hashtag MyIndianLife or email me at myindianlife at bbc.com. Today's episode is about conflict between traditional beliefs and modernity. It's the story of a young man placed at the bottom of the caste system who refuses to fit into the mold that caste hierarchies have assigned him. Rahul Sonpimple is a Dalit activist. He's 30 and is fighting for what he believes is a more just and equal society. We travel to the slum in Nagpur in central India, where he was born and grew up, the city where he worked as a child. We hear his mother describe the hopes she had for him. She's saying it's her dream that her son will become a big man and take her name forward. And his elder brother who helped to make it come true. I think there's a spark in He says Rahul had a spark. So they put their energies into supporting him and believed he could do something. For thousands of years, caste has dictated almost every aspect of Hindu religious and social life. In large parts of India, it still decides where you live, who you socialize with, what you eat or who you marry. There are four main caste groupings. At the top are the Brahmins, followed by the Kshatriyas, the Vaishyas and the Shudras. The group that Rahul belongs to is Dalit, and historically, it's been the most disadvantaged. They were called achhuts, or untouchables. They lived on the fringes of society, in ghettos, doing menial jobs that no other castes would do. Not surprising, then, that they remain among the poorest. Nearly two in three of the more than 201 million Dalits in India live in poverty. Rahul's father migrated to Nagpur from a village in Bhandara district to escape poverty. Most of these people who are living in slums are the migrants, the landless laborers in the village. In village also, the situation is very bad. So what do they do? They come to city because in the city, they don't have to face the immediate operation. So for example, you are Dalit, means uh, you are not a human being at all. So that time when my father migrated, he used to tell us that in the village, nobody would call them by, by their name. They would call them by their caste, mm -hmm. uh, always. In upper caste especially, they will, they will give you the another name. So, for example, they would call you Dagdu. They would call you in the Marathi dumb. You know, you're like stone, no mm. feelings, nothing. Dagdu, come here. Like, if you don't want to work in their field, they will come and just burn your houses. So, this was the situation. So, they migrated. They started working in some factories, some other jobs and all these things. He found work as a cycle rickshaw puller while his mother worked on building sites. Rahul says he was deeply influenced by his father. 
Like the Dalit icon Baba Ambedkar, he had embraced Buddhism and liked telling stories to his son, especially those with a strong moral core. My father used to tell us this is a rule of law. The dukkha and sukkha is a rule of law. The very idea suffering of suffering and happiness are yeah part of life. Part of nah, life. so so mm. now we are having dukkha. If you go the Buddha's way, means the moral way. Mm. You don't cheat. Uh, you you struggle. So one day you will be having your own life. If you struggle, if you work hard, then you can come out of it. Rahul's father died when he was thirteen after a long illness. The money his mother and two elder brothers made was not enough for the family. Rahul too had to work during the school vacation to help support himself and his two younger brothers. His first job was in a small hotel, and his first salary seven rupees a day and a samosa, and an ear full of galis or abuses. What were you doing in the hotel? A cleaning yes. job, cleaning. like in serving mm. the samosa and the snacks and other things, bringing water from the bore well. Tell us about like. So the treatment in when you were young, have you got memories of that? If you don't work, or uh, you know you're tired, you want to sit, so then you'll get galis like you know, and this is usual stuff. So wherever and customers, any any story? they also do like you know uh, in such hotel or you know like these places you can't expect that anybody will you know ask you in a good manner. But then I left that job uh, mm. because I didn't I didn't like it. But not working was not an option. And Rahul's next holiday job was on a construction site. Because in my slum, majority of uh, people they work in this uh, alu- this f- aluminium fabrication work. This window, the glass window, the glass door. So then uh, I started going with them as a helper. That time I used to earn like twenty five rupees per day. Then it, it got increased thirty, then thirty five. Then I, when I started learning the stuff, then I started getting seventy, eighty rupees. Forced by the circumstances and crippling poverty, his older brothers dropped out of school at a very young age to work full time. Rahul had to walk five kilometers to school and back daily, and few people in the slum could understand why he bothered. When we, you know, walk back to your slum or the area, there are people who will ask you like, "Why the hell you are going to school? Their life is like." Possible. So you mean like friends from the slum? Your friends, friends would be like, neighbors, why are you bothering? Like, why, uh-huh, because they don't go to school. Young minds are impressionable, and the formative years can be make or break for anyone. His father, who had given him lessons in morality, was dead. His mother was hard at work, trying to ensure that there was food on their plates. With his older brothers at work, Rahul was often left to his own devices. There were dark days. Did you ever feel the pressure to just leave all this? Yeah, many time, many time. I used to think like you know. Why the hell I am also going to school? Because when I was working, I was working with the uh, the youngster from my basti. Those who never go to school means like they left school third standard, fourth standard. So sometimes I used to like their life because it's so cool. Go to work, get money, just beat someone. Like I used to be very aggressive, and somebody beats me, so I'll make sure that I beat that guy. Mm. So that that was a thing. Mm. But I wanted to become rich. I don't want means I don't want to die in the poverty. Although caste discrimination is a crime under Indian constitution, it remains a rude reality. Police statistics show that crimes against Dalits have been increasing over the years. In 2016, nearly 800 Dalits were killed, and police received more than 40,000 complaints of atrocities against them. Earlier this year, PM Narendra Modi appealed to the people to help end caste repression. We need to build a new India which is free from the venom of casteism. He told a rally in Gujarat. Rahul quotes Ambedkar to say that caste is a disease and that upper castes carry it wherever they go. He talks about lower castes who've converted to other faiths like Islam or Christianity or Sikhism, but who still face bigotry. Children, he says, are introduced to caste at a time when they are too young to understand these differences. That's why when upper caste children from his neighborhood wanted to play with him, it was their mothers who would turn up their noses. These children should like slum children more because we are more adventurous. <laughs> we don't have much fear of what will happen, injury, and all these things. Yeah. So obviously, this kid would love to, you know, dance with us, play with us. So the mother would come and they say, "Why the hell you are playing with this for? You know, losers." Their mothers. Would yeah. Come. They assume that we don't take bath. Mm. But my mother, <laughs> she'll make sure so that today, every day, I should take bath. 
but they assume that because i am dark skin hmm. and not good clothes they would assume ki i have taken bath so hmm. she'll think that something some you know something will happen to her children hmm. because uh, maybe i am carrying some disease or something it's very harsh very harsh hmm. The slum where Rahul grew up is called Dhammadeep Nagar. It's home to 1500 families, most of them Dalits and Muslims. On a baking hot day, Rahul gives us a tour of the area. In my childhood we used to all play over here. My childhood friend his house is there and now he works as a laborer. There you can see this uh, blue house is my elder brother house and this one the green one is my house where now my mother and my younger brother stays. and uh, you can see this on every house is there is this jai bhim is written so jai bhim is basically to remember the ambedkar you can see the blue flags and the panchashil flag also ambedkar chose the blue as a color for his movement which he says is all of the dark ash the sky is a blue and uh, it doesn't have a limit um, after ambedkar like ambedkar converted into buddhism in 1956 so there are these symbolic representations like a panchashil flag or the uh, the buddha statue you can see at, and the buddha's uh, photos and the pictures in the houses photos of buddha and several dalit political icons adorn the walls of rahul's one room house his mother hirabai punaram sonpimple is in her early 50s dressed in a bright red and blue sari she talks about how hard her own life was married at 15 giving birth to five boys looking after a sick husband coping with widowhood backbreaking work to ensure her children were fed and clothed she's speaking in hindi so i will translate mere wo matte gote ke kaam ko jaati thi log acche nahi ye karte the koi kuch bolta tha koi kuch bolta tha yani zyada hum mere upar zyada ye karte the ekdam jawan thi abar abar kapde nahi the pehenne ke liye saadi nahi blouse nahi she's saying that when she used to go to work people would pass lewd remarks at her she was young then she didn't have proper clothes and couldn't even afford a blouse she washed and wore the same sari every day and rahul's father had passed away so there was no man to speak up for her slum culture rahul explains is very vicious don't romanticize slums and poverty he warns hirabai says rahul was in school from the time he was 6 years old padhai yani hoshyar tha mera ladka ye अच्छे हर हर साल पास होता था छोटेपन में यानी थोड़ा डेंजर था यानी कोई बच्चे में इसमें उसमें जाना ये करना शी सेज ही वॉज वेरी ब्राइट ही डिड वेल इन इज स्टडीज एंड पास एवरी ईयर बट शी सेज शी यूज टू बी कंसर्न अबाउट हिम बिकॉज ही वॉज अ डेंजर चाइल्ड हु हंग आउट विद द बैड किड्स गॉट इन टू फाइट्स शी यूज टू वंडर हाउ ही वुड टर्न आउट शी सेज शी यूज टू काउंसल हिम शी टोल हिम इफ योर गुड it will be good for our family he understood by the time he reached class 8 or 9 rahul says his mother worked day and night to provide books and clothes for him there were little victories too he remembers the one time he won a trophy in a debate and she was so proud of him in class 10 exams he scored 56% marks the highest in his school rahul says he could have done better but he had no maths teacher for half a year he couldn't afford tuition and besides he had to work two years later he hit his lowest point uh, yeah. no there was a point when i was in 12th standard i remember uh, i uh, uh, they, um, before the exam i started feeling very you know depressed in the sense uh, like i used to think that i will not i uh, you know i'll not clear this exam and why did this happen now i understand because uh, most of my friends at that time also they used to go for the good tuition classes and all that and i couldn't afford to do that i used to feel very you know that inferiority you know bahut zyada feel ho raha ki yaar kuch to you know like nahi ho payega hum se itna to main fir beech mein soch leta ki i will never write exam this and main kaam hi karunga fir iske baad he saying he thought he wouldn't pass his exams and decided not to write them he thought about leaving studies and working instead i remember one day my mother she was kaam se aa rahi thi and i was sitting yahan pe bahar aur jaise meri mom aayi main rone lag gaya tha And one day she came back from work he was sitting outside and began to cry and then she hugged me and she told me that you know uh, no matter what happens whether you fail or pass i don't care but you don't cry so what else you need in the life Rahul's eldest brother Milind is a bakery chef 
He dropped out of school when he was 12 and took odd jobs to contribute to the family income and especially to keep Rahul in school. बड़ा इसलिए नहीं कि हमारे घर में मतलब मेरे फादर अस्थमा के पेशेंट थे तो फिर और वैसे भी यहाँ पे पढ़ाई का माहौल नहीं था परिस्थिति ऐसी थी कि हम पढ़ पढ़ नहीं सकते थे मिलन सेज दे डिन स्टडी मच Their father was ill. He had asthma and the environment at home was not conducive for education, so he dropped out. They were living in extreme poverty, but Rahul always came first or second in his class. He had a spark. So they put their energies into supporting him and believed he could do something. Phir bara bhi pass ho gaya. To main bolti thi, tu kya bolenga vakil? Apun to doctor nahi bana sakte, kya apne paas paisa nahi hai. Doctor ko bahut paisa lagta hai doctor banane ko. When he passed class 12th, his mother told him that she didn't have money to pay for a medical course. So she told him to become a barrister. Rahul would tell her that yes, he would become a barrister. Well, it didn't quite work out that way. Rahul first won a scholarship to study Dalit and tribal social work at TIS, the Tata Institute of Social Sciences in Mumbai. It was for the first time that he experienced what student life is. As Rahul talks, I think about all the things many of us take for granted. I, I, you know, I could go to library any time, go to the classes. You are having friends now. You don't bother about your meal. In in our family, there is no idea of breakfast. Whatever you left there in the house, you have to eat that. I used to be very happy. So you are getting breakfast, some fruits. From this, he went to the prestigious Jawaharlal Nehru University in Delhi. Where he is now pursuing a PhD in sociology, not a barrister, but his mom remains very proud of him. Abhi kya sapna hai? Mera yeh sapna hai. Mera bar, mera ladka acha bane, bada bane, acha bada ban ke roshan naam roshan kare. Mera wala, yani mere ko acha rakhe. Abhi mere tabiyat achi nahi rehti. Mera beta mere ko paise bechta, bhot dhan rakhta, bhot dhan rakhta. She's saying that it's her dream that her son will become a big man and take her name forward. Her son, Mira Wala, means my one. When she falls sick, he sends her money. He takes good care of her. He calls her every day and takes her to good hospitals. She says everyone recognizes her son. He comes on television, in the papers. She says her son is a big man now. In the past few years Rahul has established himself as a Dalit student leader as a junior research fellow at JNU he's vocal about caste based discrimination including on university campuses he's a prominent member of BAPSA a student organization that campaigns for inclusivity in education and opposes the caste system last month he was invited to speak at a conference in Bangalore where he addressed a gathering of about 2000 Dalits yeah yeah Ah, Dalit boy on the mic, representing unspoken truths, representing unspoken truths, yeah, unspoken truths, yeah. Bata do hume agar bachaye kuch aur kya kya dekhe, bas itna hi kahunga, mar ke bhi jina hai, ham ladai. His friend and fellow activist Sumit Samos took to the stage to rap about Dalit rights. Let's learn to fight, he sings. लक्ष्मणपुर बढ़ानी टोला कारम चेडू चुंदुरु मारी चापी कंदमाल ऊना और मिर्चपुर बता दो हमें अगर बचाए कुछ और क्या क्या देखे बस इतना ही कहूंगा मर के भी जीन है हम लड़ाई सीख ले मर के भी जीन है हम लड़ाई सीख ले मर के भी जीन है हम लड़ाई सीख ले हां मर के भी जीन है हम लड़ाई सीख ले Rahul talks about some recent atrocities against the community and what the government is or isn't doing to address them In 1950, India introduced quotas in educational institutions and government jobs for the lowest in the caste hierarchy. In recent years, there have been demands from several upper caste communities to include them in the quota system or scrap it entirely. Some of the protests have turned violent. Rahul argues that quotas are necessary because traditionally the system bestowed many privileges on the upper castes while allowing repression of the lower castes. caste is an ugly reality in india he says pointing out the news reports of daily conflicts between caste groups if you read the history of caste and the discrimination you would come to know that there is to be taxes uh, you know on dalits if they want to keep a mustache or you know dalit women wants to cover their breast 
it is so surprising that still these uh, practices are you know continuing and going on so for example uh, you often get to know or you know re- it get reports in the newspaper that the dalit grooms get killed or uh, they get attacked by the upper caste if they want to get on the horse during the marriage ceremony or you know like a dalit boy get killed uh, you know wearing sunglasses or wearing jeans or good clothes it is so surprising that the still this practice are going on and it has just become very normal in indian society it also shows the impunity which upper caste has in this country rahul makes a passionate case for why it's time to do away with the caste system he says the lower castes the tribals and the muslims who are facing frequent discrimination and violence are still asking for government protection and equal treatment but he believes things are not really changing It's commendable he says that the lower castes are largely making their case peacefully in a non-violent way following Ambedkar's path. His biggest fear is that if the poorest and the socially disadvantaged lose hope and decide to take matters in their own hands this country would be changed forever. So that was Rahul's story. I'm also keen to hear and share some of your own stories. like this one that comes from a teenager who identifies as transgender being forced to wear girly clothes for you are a girl don't behave like a boy forced to keep hair long being called names is an everyday chore anyway i told you because i needed to blurt this out chest dysphoria a constant nagging feeling that you are a misfit i just felt like sharing it with someone well thank you for doing that for sharing your story with us Here are a few messages we've received after our last episode on Insia Dariwala who was abused as a child and now helps other children in India. Kanchana said, "It was so imperative that a dialogue be started around this issue with the child molestation news almost every day and these are those which are reported. Goodness knows what number isn't being reported." It broke my heart when a close friend told me about the abuse they suffered as a child. and it also makes it so much more difficult when i see that person struggling in life because of the abuse and aditya said i am now aware of this diabolical silent epidemic that lingers in our society with a magnitude that has blown my mind and the thought that possibly any child can be a victim to this barbaric act sends chills down my spine i'm a father to a 2 year old daughter And even the thought of her perhaps falling prey to this silent epidemic causes unimaginable pain. Please do keep sending in your thoughts and stories. You can reach us at BBC World Service on social media. Our hashtag is my indian life and you can email us at myindianlife@bbc.com. In the next episode, we'll hear about gender identity and what happens when you don't feel comfortable in your own skin. I hope you're enjoying listening to my Indian life. If you haven't already, do listen to the first 6 episodes and do keep telling everyone you know about this podcast. Thank you for listening. <laughs>